Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godin and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we'll bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello and welcome, world, to the Call by God podcast. I'm yours truly, Nixon Sylvain, and I'm here with my co-host, Adney Godin. Sister Godin, how are you doing on this blessed day? I am magic. I wanted to use that word for the longest. And why do I say I am magic? Because of the Holy Spirit that dwells deep within me using me and for everything that he entrusts me to do. So I am magic. I am his vessel. I am, I am his. So that's how I'm doing this morning. How are you doing, Brother Nick? I am blessed. I am blessed by the best. Um, I'm still elated um, and still thinking about how we made it one year. So uh, to me, that's, that resonates with me a whole lot. And it's a blessing that God is still using us uh, to do his will. So I am blessed by the best, Adney. Uh, So are you ready? I I think there's a lot of things we usually say before we dive into our our episodes, Adney. But I think uh, this morning I'm super excited. Why? Why? Because we have a, a special, 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 special superstar. My wife. Trinique Sylvain is joining us. Sister Trinique, how are you doing on this blessed? I am blessed. I am blessed. I am so happy to be um, a part of this. Um, I can't wait to, for the discussion. Um, just to join you guys is just such a blessing just within itself. Amen. So we're excited because we're going to be talking about uh, Sarah uh, on t- t- today. And I think, Adney, you said it um, a while back when we was uh, having a discussion about Adam. You said, hey, you can't talk about the husband without talking about the wife. They're like intertwined. They're together. So I think it go hand in hand because we were talking about Abram, Abraham. Okay, you can't talk about the father of faith without talking about his wife. And and, and it's just so amazing that uh, that you're on, Trinique. So it's a special day for me. So, uh, so you got husband and wife is on and, and co-host. So that's a blessing, blessing for me, but let's go ahead and just dive into, um, our lesson in our discussion. So before we do that, uh, Adney has a word, uh, for today. The word for today comes from Proverbs 21 verse five, and it reads the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance and advantage. But everyone who acts in haste comes surely to poverty. And I had to meditate on that because I realized God gives us visions, but sometimes those visions are not meant to be brought into fruition right away. He has to show you the buildup before you, you, you can act. And some of us, we get the visions from God and we move in such a haste. And he's like, I didn't tell you to do, I didn't tell you to move. I gave you the vision, but I didn't tell you to move. You're moving in your own strength. And what I realized is that when we move in our own strength, we mess things up. We have a deficit. And, and I always say this to your wife, God's blessings will not yield a deficit. He's not going to give you something in for you to have to go and clean it up afterwards. No, he's going to give it to you. He's going to tell you when to move. And when you move upon his timing, it, it lines up perfectly with what he wants. So that's that's what I got from it this morning. It's so much that I could say about uh, what you just uh, read, Adney. But I think my my heart, you got to forgive me. I think my heart is more so on, on the Sarah episode. <laughs> I think what you just said, you just pretty much dropped the mic on that particular scripture. So I'm going to just leave it alone because whatever you said was already good and it's set. It is well and done. I'm just ready to just dive into Sarah. Sarah, are you okay with that, Annie? Do I have your permission? Okay, it's cool. Okay, so Sarah is uh, Abraham's uh, wife. 
Sarah means lady, princess, noble woman. Sarah and Abraham came from the land or the city of Ur. And if you listen to Abraham episodes that that we had in the past, uh, she followed her husband. Uh, They went from Ur to Haran. And then God called Abraham and Sarah left with her husband. God called Abraham, of course, to go to a land which was Canaan. So they went to Canaan and that's where they later on reside. And then there was a, a famine. There was some issues that was going on in the land and they went to Egypt. And that's where we're going to touch on that right now. So we're just going to begin and we're going to begin from chapter 12 through uh, verses 4 uh, through 20. And we'll just have a discussion. Just the three of us will have a discussion about what happened with Sarai, because we really want the focus to be on Sarai. And we don't want Abraham to take all the attention because we already had all these episodes about him. So, uh, let, yeah, let's get into it. So verse uh, chapter 12 of Genesis, verses four and five, I'll start off. So it says, and Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took his took his uh, wife, Sarai, and Lot, his brother, and all of their substance that they gathered and their souls that they have gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land uh, and into the land of Canaan. They came. So it's pretty much what I just said. They went to the area of Canaan, which later on became uh, the, the promised land. So verse number 10, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward to verse number 10. And there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt to sort join there. But the famine was grievous in the land. And we got to. So when you think of famine um, and I want to make it relevant, there was issues going on. So let's make it relevant. There's issues that's going on in the land. So wherever they're residing, uh, there's issues. So and it. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt. So they went to a territory where of people that didn't serve God. They didn't acknowledge God for who they, who he was. So in verse number 11 says that he said unto Sarai. So this is the man of God, um, you know, God's chosen vessel telling his wife. So he told his wife, behold, I, he said, behold, now I know that you are a fair woman to look upon. So he's telling his wife, hey, hon, you you look you look good, honey. You a dime piece. So uh, that's pretty much I like the fact that my wife is on the show because it's like equivalent to like I'm saying, hey, hon, you look real good. And look what Abraham said. He said, therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say this is his wife and that they will kill me, but they will save you alive. So Abraham is telling Sarah, like, Sarah, like you are a pretty woman. If these Egyptians see you, they're going to say, hey, this wife belongs to Abraham, me, and then and then they're going to kill me and, and they're going to marry you and they're going to save you. So Abraham is scared for his life. And number 13, he says, say, I pray thee that thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee. So I don't add it or Antronique, I don't know if there's anything such thing as a partial lie or a lie lie. But I think Abraham flat out told his wife to lie to save him. Now, it doesn't mean that he's unrighteous. It's just that we all, as humans, have flaws. And it highlights one of Abraham's flaws by say, telling his wife, like, hey, hon, you know, I'm, I'm scared. Um, number one, there's an issue in the land, and I'm, we're going to another place. Just please tell them that you're my sister so that they won't kill me. Now, so I want to hear your perspective. Um, I, I don't know who want to go first. From a woman perspective, and, and, and Trinique, maybe you could answer this, like, if I were to tell you something like that, 
would you do it or would you not do it? Or I, I just want to hear your thoughts on Sarah first and kind of make it more relevant. Like, what would you do? Any of y'all could go first. I know Trinica, I aimed it towards you. So um, I'm, I'm reminded of um, lies can save lives, if that makes sense. Um, sometimes you have to, you have to. It's like, if you want to save this person's life, you're going to have to, Lord, forgive me, but I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and, 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 and just, just say this so this person won't die. And Sarah realized, I love my husband enough to cover him. So I'm going to cover him in this in this aspect. I'm going to let these men know that, nah, he's my brother, just to save his life. But the thing that, that kind of came out to me was husbands are supposed to cover their wives, not the other way around. And to ask your wife to do such a thing is a very selfish act on your part because God bless you with this woman. Don't you think that he would protect both of you in any situation? One of my favorite movies is Ghost. <laughs> and I remember when the, the characters were walking, coming from a play, and this guy came up to him with a gun. And he he told her to run. And he and he like, you know, doing everything, fighting him off. Yeah, he ended up dying. But his stance was. I'm going to protect her at all costs, right? And even the guy I'm talking to, he said to me, he said, let me tell you something. If we're ever out and somebody comes like after us, all I want to see is your butt running and let me handle the situation. And that's what comes to my mind. Why would a husband put his wife in that position to have to cover him to protect his life, not their lives, but his life. Um, that's a very good answer, um, Adney. The way I, as for me, to save my husband, I'm more or less probably, more or less, I would do it. So, because I don't want to see death upon him. But I think this is where, back in those days, where they saw a lot of, you know, things from God, you know, f- full on. So, not to say he wasn't a righteous man, but I think this is where you trusting in God will come in. And you're right. He is supposed to cover his wife. So it, it looked at more like a selfish moment. Like, I need you to protect me. Like, I know you're going to be OK, but I need you to protect me. But then you're looking for your wife to protect you. But then where is God to protect you? So. You are looking for a man to protect you and not God. And see, in those days, it was God was showing them like a lot of wonders and showing them things like like not even like now. So if you was to ask me in that situation right now, it's not to say that I don't trust God. But in the situation like that, more or less, I would to protect my husband because I don't want my husband to die. Um, so I understand where she's coming from. But on the back end from where he's coming from. That's where it kind of gets tricky because it it becomes more of a selfish moment for if you really look at it, it's more selfish. And I think that it should have been him looking to God to save him and not his wife, because that's the way it was looking like you have to tell them that I am your brother so you can save me, not that God can save me. So, I mean, that's how I, I see it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. 
Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Yeah, so like even looking back to what Sarah did, I think it was an act of obedience uh, to her her husband. Because in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 says, For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. And then that's what it says, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, who daughters are ye as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. So I think what Sarai or Sarah did, you know, for her husband, it was an act of obedience. And that says a lot about her that she's willing and not like, not like a slave mentality, not like you do this for me or else. I think the number one thing is Abraham had a calling on his life. So that's number one. Abraham, he's the pivotal and he's the key piece of this because God called him um, and as a result, his wife is tied to the blessings. So they all have the blessing as a whole. So it's like what God put together, let no man asunder. Like that saying is true because God really put Abraham and Sarah together. So I think what Sarah did was an act of obedience. But uh, in addition to that, it, it show you the vulnerability of Abraham. Because Abraham, because we as men, we're built to be tough. We're built to be priests, protectors and the providers of our home. But yet I think Sarah didn't, you know, bash him and say, are you supposed to be the man of this house? Why are you, why, why are you ain't, why are you ain't protecting me? Why are you so worried about you? And I think some sisters could get out of hand, you know, like they could downplay or downgrade a man personality or image because like, so we can make it relevant. Like, We know that men have flaws and failures. We know that already. We know that we're imperfect people, but we are perfected in Christ. So, like, don't highlight my failures. Like, Sarah could have highlight, highlight, you know, Abraham's failure to Pharaoh. She could have said, oh, uh, let me tell you something. Um, Let me tell you what my husband said. He said that he told me to tell you that, that, you know, we're sisters. We're brothers and sisters. So she, and I think where a lot of wives go wrong, they want to highlight their husband's failures. And, and that's what I like about Sarah because she didn't, she, she, it was an act of obedience. Number one, she trust, she had that trust in God. Okay, God, I, I know he probably not in his right mind right now. So I'll say it. I'll say it because he's my husband. And even though he's supposed to have certain roles, but it goes to show he was flawed in that time. But eventually he, he ended up getting better. And I think that's what I could see from Sarah. Um, it was an act of obedience and, and so on and so forth. I, I'm, I'm grateful and thankful that you shared that because God brought to my remembrance, love covers a multitude of sins, right? Um, and like I said before, sometimes you're going to have to bite the bullet so you can cover the person that you love. And... Um, and I remember having a discussion where it was like, so is it okay to lie or is it not okay to lie? And it's just like love covers a multitude of sins. So if you love this person, you're going to do what you have to do to protect that person. Um, unfortunately, that's how it works out sometimes. And, and it's like, you know, um, thank God, just <laughs> you just be like, okay, Lord, I'm about to do this, but uh, I pray. You forgive me <laughs> after I do this one thing. So that that's one of the things I wanted to share. It's just that we were, we're, we're I'm, again, I'm not a wife. So I love how you responded and said that, you know, she did. Because, you know, us black women, especially, <laughs> we, we'll, we'll, we'll put you out there. And that's something that God has. And, and that, it's not even a God thing. That's a Satan thing for you to expose your husband, to uh, your husband's vulnerabilities and flaws. That's not of God. That's of Satan. So she did the most powerful and most amazing thing. And that was cover her husband to protect him. And granted, 
my belief is he didn't really need protecting because God had him, but she did what she had to do to to protect him. This is what I want to say. First of all, uh, there's no little sin and there's no big sin. Number one, we all sin and fall short of God's glory. And like I alluded to, it goes to show you one of Abraham's flaws. That was a flaw. That was one flaw. We can't highlight him as, as a liar. No, he, yeah, he made a mistake. It was a mistake. And then we move, we move forward. He was scared. He was fearful. That's, that's what happened. And I think, I think what I'm trying to convey is that um, as husbands, sometimes we do get scared as husbands. I don't care. Nobody said like men, men have walls. We, and, and I was having a conversation with another man about this yesterday. He said, man, he said, man, we go through so much as men. He said, but, and I said, yeah, that's why these women live long. Cause they be sharing their problems, but men are scared too. And I'm going to tell you where men are scared in their pockets. That's the, one of the biggest thing in their pockets. So men always feel that they want to prove, yeah, man, I'm providing for my family man, I'm working but let their money dwindle. Let them let them have a job making about eight dollars an hour, and the wife is making fifty dollars an hour. She could almost make them feel small. So instead of protecting them, instead of protecting them, you could have a wife out there making them feel small. And I think that's what highlights about Sarah. She didn't make her husband feel small. That was his flaw, but she didn't make him feel small. He was scared. And, and I'm just trying to make it relevant. Whereas men, we get scared. And that's just one thing. We get scared for certain things. You know, job loss. Like, honey, I'm scared. Like, you ain't gonna, you, chances are most husbands, they ain't, ain't going to tell their wives they're scared. Like, honey, I'm scared. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to make it through this job. I'm scared. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this school. They're not going to say that. But it takes a special woman to say like, hon, don't worry about that. You can leave that job. I got this. Let me hold it down for two, three months. I got this. Right. So that's how I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, Sarah, something that Abraham was supposed to do, but in a state where Abraham was vulnerable, she took that. She said, you know what? I'll take that hit. I'll take that hit for us. And I think what women could glean from this, from this, what we're talking about, Sarah, is that sometimes they could take a role where when their husbands are weak or fearful, and it's not all the time because men, we're so prideful. We got egos. We're supposed to be strong, brave. But no, there's sometimes we're going through some mental issues and they have to take a wife to step in that position. Like, honey, I got this. I know you're the man. I'm trusting in God, but I got this. Um, Yeah, I like what you said. And it, it, it doesn't make it right to to lie because it's never good to lie. That's That's one thing. Of course, that's one of the commandments. So God is not, you know, he's not going to go back on um, what he commanded. But what I do understand is like what you said, when there is a level of fear, sometimes it's like fight or flight. And it's just like, and you go into a fight mode and then it's like, whatever that fight mode is, it's like, you do what you have to do. So you're right. It's now, it's not right what he did. And it was a flaw, but it showed that he's human. It shows that he's human and that, you know, and I, I can appreciate that how God has and have us flawed people even now to see that there were flaws even back in the days that showed that they were not perfect. So I do agree with you totally and 100 percent that um, that it was kind of like a mode that he was in that he was afraid. And when you're afraid. You'll do anything, especially when it comes to your life. So he was fearful for his life. And I mean, and it doesn't navigate. And I understand now to think about it. It doesn't say that he didn't have um, faith or anything like that. But sometimes when you are afraid, sometimes that highlight where your faith is. And sometimes God will work on that and God will show you, OK, see, you thought you were here but you really not. And sometimes that's what God really does. Sometimes it's not even about the lie. Sometimes it's a reflection of God to show you where you are with him. And that's the way I look at it totally. So I think that that's more so 
it, where it could be. It it's probably was a mirror reflection of himself to see where he was at, that he was trusting more into his wife to cover him than he was trusting in God. But it didn't, it doesn't negate that he's not a, a God fearing man. It was just that he was just afraid. Look, that was a mic drop for me because <laughs> she, she, she nailed it. Um, as human beings, when we get, when we get scared, We'll, we're liable to do anything to cover ourselves. There's nothing else to add. So moving forward, so after she said what she said, uh, yeah, of course, to Pharaoh, Pharaoh took Sarai as his wife. He took her in in the home. So, but l- look what Pharaoh did. So he took Sarah. Sarah. I want. I'm saying Sarai. Sarah. At this time, her name is Sarai. Her her name is going to later on change. So I want to get a habit of saying Sarai. So Sarai, she went into Pharaoh's home, but Pharaoh gave Abraham all these possessions. He started giving Abraham stuff. It's like it's like an ex- exchange, right? But look what happened. And I, it's, it's a lot that I, I, I'm about to say about what I'm about to read right now. So verse number 17 in chapter 12, it says, And the Lord plague." Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is that thou has done unto me? Why did thou not tell me that she was your wife? Now, this is big for me because number one, I I want y'all to understand this. God called Abraham which means that God's hand is on Abraham. You cannot mess with God's anointed. It don't matter how much flaws he got. When God call you, you are now become a stamp. You are now become a mouthpiece for God. So God called Abraham in this very same chapter. He called him. And like I alluded to, Sarai is tied to Abraham. So what did God tell Abraham that he's going to bless him? He's going to multiply his seed. Well, that blessing has to come through Sarai. So nobody is going to mess what God is trying to plan. Because, you know, I like, and I used to say that, and you know, Trinique, we we used to talk about it. I like, Trinique, what about if I would have married this woman? How you think my life would have been if I would have married another woman besides you? And it's kind of like this, you know, God's plan is already in play. Like, Abraham, you're going to be with Sarai, and I'm going to bless y'all. Y'all going to have a a child, and yet the blessing is going to come through you guys. Remember, whatever God says, his word, do not return to him void. And I want to say this. Not only that um, Abraham is called, like I said, the blessing is tied to Sarai, but Pharaoh Pharaoh is messing with a blessed, he's messing with a woman that is blessed and anointed by God through Abraham. So as a result in chapter seven, in verses 17, God sent a plague. So that tells me that if I'm anointed, my wife is anointed and it don't have to be another male having a relation with my wife. But I'm saying that when it could be other things. When a a person uh, that doesn't have no respect for God and has, you know, and and call my spouse, Trinique, you, let me use my wife as an example, and try to mess with my wife, God is going to deal with them. Remember, God is going to deal with them. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So God will bring certain things upon your life. When you start asking yourself, like, man, what's going on in my world? What's going on in my life? Well, maybe you have one of God's anointed. Maybe it's something you have said or done to one of God's anointed. And that's why um, Trinique um, and and Annie, uh, people have to realize that they cannot mess with God's anointed. We see it here in verse number 17 that a plague came across Pharaoh's house. Why? Because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. What I'm reminded of as well, as you said that I'm trying to find the scriptures where it's where um, I think it's in in Peter, where he says to the husbands, you know, 
like love your wives as a weaker vessel so that you're, you know, when you pray, your prayers won't be hindered. Right. So at the end of the day, like you said, their blessings are tied to each other because if Abraham mistreats his wife, he's going to hinder some blessings, even though he's anointed, he's going to hinder some blessings from flowing because of his wife. You have to treat her in such a way. And, and then to know that God blesses the marriage as a whole and anyone that comes against that union, God will cause a plague to come against them. And it's not so much like you're going to literally get this plague. You're going to be praying about some stuff. And God is like, nah, until you get that right, well, what you did to that couple, I ain't answering none of your prayers. So that's something that people have to understand. Do not touch the Lord's anointed. I like what you said about that, Adney, um, how everything, um, the blessings are intertwined as one. That is very powerful, what you said. It, it really is. And it, it goes to show that even though, you know, that he didn't do anything, you know, you know, with her, it just shows that God was not going to about to allow anything to happen. Like, if God said it, it's done. It doesn't matter. I always like that saying, sometimes you got to look like you're losing. Sometimes it doesn't even look like it's, you know, it's on the winning on the winning um, side, but you have to look like you're losing. In that situation, it looked like, you know, he got all, Abraham got everything that he wanted. His wife was, you know, was going to be with her. But of course, even though it looked it like more so, that he had everything, he was still, I'm sure, vexed in his spirit because that was his wife. His wife was with somebody else. But even in the midst of that, of everything that he did with, you know, the lying and everything like that, it showed that God was still with him. And that's the powerful point is just that regardless of the situation, if you are anointed by God, God is going to always be with you. You might not do the right things or do what you're supposed to do, but he's going to always be with you. Amen. And we could say so much about Sarah. And I know this is just the beginning. Um, what, you know, what we discuss about Sarah and there's more to come. I'm just looking forward to hear how Sarah's story is going to unfold. And, and the thing about Sarah, uh, you know, her story, her walk, her call, is is usually overlooked because she's she's her story is tied to Abraham. So when you when you when we hear um, the Old Testament, you know the, the first initial name that comes up to is Abraham. We we learn st- a song as kids, Father Abraham. It's not Mama Sarah. So we got to get in the habit of saying Mama Sarah because uh, a wife is a, a very important piece uh, to to a husband. And, and that's why I, I like what we discussed so far. I mean, there's more that we could discuss, but but I think just just sitting here and just resting here at chapter 12 is, is more than a, enough. But I, I guess there's more to unfold with Sarah. And we're going to try to highlight the key moments of Sarah's life, although there's not much that's said, but there's some things that we could pull and share, you know, what she did uh, while she was here on earth. Now, there are some things that she did that wasn't right. And again, we oftentimes don't like to highlight people's flaws, but we like to talk about those because we want to show you that even these biblical characters wasn't perfect. And and I, I often say I dislike when people say they got to wait till they become perfect to give their life to Christ. And we see it here throughout the Bible where these individuals are fallible. They, they have issues. But yet they they yet they still trusted in God. So that's what we wanted to highlight. And I think that's enough that that was said about Sarah. We'll continue to have discussions about Sarah because I'm I'm looking forward to hear what how her story is going to unfold. And like almost every and I don't want to say almost, but every biblical character uh, has a calling on their life. And that's why this show is called Call by God, because everyone has a calling. God has called each and every one of us. And it's up to us to take heed to the call. I love how you how the, you kind of like set this up um, for Sarah, because, again, um, many and even if we're paying attention to the Middle East right now, 
women don't have a voice and just seeing that we're not just baby makers. We're not just kitchen cleaners and cookers. And, you know, we're, we're not just our husband's plaything. We are actually his help me. And knowing that God chose the perfect person to put with Abram or Abraham to walk that journey at that time. Um, did they have a child at the time? Not yet, but God chose the perfect person to partner Abraham with. And that's the thing that we have to remember. And I'm speaking from a single woman's mindset. When we truly understand that God has a purpose for us as single women, possibly future wives, will understand that his, his plan will always be complete once he brings us to our husband. We ain't nothing but just no plaything. We are there. Help me. Respect yourself enough, young sister. Respect yourself enough to know that in the eyes of God, you are worthy. Okay. You don't have to lay down with some. Do- no, you are worthy. You are God's princess. You are a daughter of Sarah. Remember that and carry yourself that way. I'm not telling you to be bougie, but I am telling you to respect yourself. I like what you said, Adney. That's that's um, powerful from you. Um, speaking from a single person's perspective, and I think that you 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 nailed it. And um, speaking from a married person perspective, uh, Nick, even when you were talking, I totally agree with you. You you are absolutely right. God called husbands to love their wives, and then women are to respect their husbands. And respect doesn't mean that you just you don't have a voice. It doesn't mean that you still speak, you know, but it's 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 a matter of respecting them. And you're right. Even um, in times where back in the day, just a, a little back, uh, uh, just a little um, backdrop. It, it was a time, you know, me and my husband going on 10 years, I think like three years even in our marriage for the three years in um, the three years of our marriage. Um, we first got married. I uh, I was making more than him. But I still allowed him to lead. I still allowed him to be a man. I didn't throw in his face. Well, you know, I would make way more money than you do. And I, I, I never, ever did that. Never. And, you know, I still respected him for the man of God that he is and that he was back then, that he still is to this day, I still had a level of respect because the way I looked at it is it wasn't my money or his money. It was our money. So if I got a raise, guess what? We got a raise, you know? So it was always, it was always us and we. It was no, never I and my. It was us together. So Whenever I used to be like, and I think one year I had got like three raises and he was happy for me and I was making way more than he was, but it was, he was happy for me because it was just like him getting a raise because we're one and it was a respect thing. I still continue to allow him to lead, continue to allow him to be the man that he, that God had called him to be and still look and still be the weaker vessel, not a weaker vessel as in, I don't have a voice and I don't say what's on my heart and my mind. It is not like that. It's just that I was there to comfort him, to encourage him, to be there for him, even during those times. And he's right. Men will never tell you when you're afraid, but when you are connected to your husband enough, you can sense it. You can sense it. And you're there, you're supposed to be there to encourage. So I look at Sarah, Sarah more so as kind of like, it was like a respect thing. It was a covering thing. So Nick is right. I mean, you can't talk about him without talking about her because she was a very key part of his life. Amen. Amen. My wife is making me blush over here. But (laughs) see, see, I think I got to have more female uh, biblical characters so I can invite my wife on this this, uh, platform, this platform. But I'm I'm blushing over here, y'all. If if I was on, if y'all could see my face, I'm I'm smiling over here. Ear to ear. Yeah. 
but but look where all this this show was it definitely blessed my my heart definitely blessed me and i hopefully that it bless you the verse adney was was alluding to was in first peter 3 7 it says likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be uh, be not hindered so uh yes husbands we have to honor our wives and, and i'm sure that's the same attitude and the same approach that abraham had but it's just a blessing just to sit back and talk about mama sarah until then world i hope this episode has blessed you continue to share it we're one year in we're feeling good about ourselves we're giving glory to god we're lifting jesus name up because souls are being changed lives are changing people are having testimonies of what god has been doing in their lives so until then be blessed that's it for now but before we go please continue to listen subscribe and share our podcast also if you want to support our show please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee we would greatly appreciate it thank you for listening and remember God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel which is the good news which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed he was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized you will be saved so it is your choice Jesus Christ will not force you you've heard the message you heard personal testimonies but this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.